And now let me invite the first presenter, Professor Atau Rahman. Professor. Good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be back here at KDU and be meeting old friends. And uh, what I'll be doing in the next 15 minutes is to give you a glimpse of what's happening in the amazing world of science, technology, and innovation, and how it's transforming the landscape of many countries and is affecting our lives in a multitude of ways. Let me straight away take you into one area, the Harry Potter book about the disappearing cloak is now a reality. These are the metamaterials, strange new materials which have a negative refractive index and which bend light. So if I was to bring a shawl and cover General Melinda with a metamaterial, he will disappear. He will still be there actually. Objects behind him uh, will be visible, but he'll be gone. And this is being now used for cloaking submarines and tanks and other defense weaponry. And this is just a glimpse of the metamaterials that are now uh, be, being used commercially. I would like to emphasize here that military strength is directly connected with technology and e economic strength. And so socioeconomic development is no longer dependent on natural resources. What has become the single biggest source for development uh, is the quality of human resources. And so it is only through an interaction between the three partners in the triple helix, the government, the universities, and industry. It is only the interaction between these three partners can countries like Sri Lanka transition to a strong knowledge economy. So the metamaterials are already in commercial production, and as I said, these are used for stealth, stealth weaponry. You have intelligent materials, so tomorrow you might be driving a car, which, may, which has a little accident, but you won't have to worry because the materials from which the car is made would have a memory. It would remember its shape, and the car will restore itself to its original shape without you ever going to a denter. And these are, again, uh, then there is graphene. Two professor, professors at Manchester University got Nobel Prizes for their discovery of graphene, an amazing material which is... Uh, uh, so strong that a strand about 150 times thinner than the human hair, you can, you can hang a fat Sri Lankan elephant and it will not break. It is 200 times stronger than steel and it is being now used for manufacturing defense related equipment. You have uh, aerogels which have come into being. These are 99.8% air and only 0.2% of it consists of silicon and carbon. And these aerogels are ext an ex extremely potent insulator of heat. Uh, so you can be wearing uh, uh, a suit made out of an aerogel and walk into a roaring fire or into minus 70 temperatures, and you won't feel a thing. Again, these are being used for various purposes, including military purposes. Nanotechnology has come in rather serendipitously, I, I must say, but in a big way into use, and uh, there are many centers for nanotechnology. So bulletproof jackets are now being made out of nanotechnology. This is actually made of cellulose, paper, paper which is bulletproof. So you would be wearing a paper jacket which is absorbent, light, and bulletproof. And you can be going to remote areas and have nanofiltration devices for purifying water. Nanomedicines have come into, into being. Mini computers are being designed using nanoelectronics and carbon nanotubes, which have this shape, are being used for a variety of weaponry and other purposes. So this is all cutting-edge science. So the science and research of today gets transformed into technology and then into products and processes. And it is this linkage between the three, between science, research, 
innovation and then its application. That's what's critically important for the, in the process of strength of nations and in the process of socioeconomic development. And that's where universities like KDU have to play a critically important role. These are machines which are made of atoms, really. So these, each of these is atoms, and they can, uh, these are tiny machines which can be taken down your blood vessels, and they can be, have anti-cancer drugs attached, and they can re release the anti-cancer drug near the site of the tumor, and uh, so that, uh, and, and, and these are little nano machines. Na nano diamonds have been developed. There are many ladies here. They all know diamonds. Well, nano diamonds. Uh, these are much harder than normal diamonds. And the amazing heat conductor again, and has the melt highest melting point of all known materials. Again, many defense applications. I'm just giving you a bird's eye view of the tremendous changes that are taking pla place in the science and technology and innovation landscape, and how it's impacting our lives. It reminds me of a lecture that the late Arthur Kornberg, a uh, professor at Stanford, a Nobel laureate, once said, in Trieste when I was attending, he said there was a time when necessity was the mother of invention. The time is now gone. The inventions are coming fast and furiously and are becoming our daily necessities. You have amorphous metals. These are metals which are, when cooled rapidly, uh, have uh, special properties and these are finding their way into uh, defense and other equipment. You have transparent alumina and buildings are being built, built out of it. Uh, artificial intelligence, we already know of drones and uh, all the, uh, the way drones have developed, but machine intelligence is now a big, big area in various fields of science, including in defense. Uh, neuroscience, the essence of man, 100 billion neurons that we have in our brain, each one connected to 7,000 or 10,000 other neurons through neuronal connections, so you have a labyrinth of a of 100 billion times 7,000, and that's how we think. We are understanding the chemical processes of thought. And some of my papers are connected with the molecular basis of memory. When, I, when you say the word mother, how are those Im images stored? This, this is all chemistry, and this chemistry that can be manipulated. So you, you have now various chemicals being designed. We all know of antidepressants. That is, if you are depressed, you take an antidepressant and you feel better. The opposite is also. Uh, known and they are available. You spray an army with depressing chemicals and they will lose their will to fight. So this is, <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is brain chemistry. Quantum and optical computers are coming up because internet security is such a vitally important area and this, these are far more secure than normal computers. You can move objects just by thought control. Uh, when you think, your brain emits basically four types of signals. One of them is a command signal. So when I do this or do that, the signal that is coming out from the brain is different from the other stray thoughts, can be readily recognized by a small computer, and then it can operate a wheelchair, and a BMW was driven around Germany two years ago purely by thought control. You just wear a cap with sensors, which senses the thoughts and identify them. The blind can see with their tongue today. Actually, you see with your brain. The eyes are only a mechanism for transfer of images. And this is a company called YCAB in Wisconsin, which has developed these commercially available devices. You can look it up tonight on the internet, WICAB. Uh, uh, and these have been used for restoring partial eyesight of American and British soldiers whose eyes were damaged in the war uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. You have these uh, little insects, cyborg beetles, half insect, half robot, fitted with cameras and sound systems which can be, which can, and, and they are stealth, so they can't be easily detec detected by electronic devices. They can sit on the wall of your president or prime minister or your army chief and transfer all that's going on, the pictures and the sounds, to the American embassy with due apologies to our American friends <laughs> in this audience a few miles away. So watch it if you have a fly sitting on your table. <laughs> this is another one. And that's another one. So there are various types of devi such devices which are available. And so intelligent wars are very much here. A building was built last year in China just by flying quadcopters. Several hundred small helicopters just about this size working together carrying bricks. And, uh, uh, and it was built just in a few days which would have otherwise taken a long time. Can we kill uh, enemies which are behind a wall? Yes, you can. These are new type of rifles fitted with special explosive devices in their bullets, 
which you can then target in a manner so that they will explode at the distance where the wall is, and so an enemy behind the wall can be killed by this, uh, by these de devices. Aeroplanes can fly without internal fuel today. These are the scramjets. You take them to 12 times the speed of sound, and uh, then